This week on Music Worth Buying, we're going to be checking out George Ezra's Wanted on Voyage. And the Decemberists, what a terrible world, what a beautiful world. Hi, this is TJR. I'm a musician and a music writer. And my name is Robert Kinsler, and I'm a music writer and a musician. And so we both have some albums that we're really excited about, that we want to talk about. We're going to share with each other and also share with you. And so let's get the ball rolling here. I'm going to start out with the debut album by George Ezra, entitled Wanted on Voyage. Uh, George Ezra is from the UK. He um, was a YouTube star, basically. He built up his popularity on YouTube, uh, released uh, two EPs. This is his debut album on Columbia Records. And um, there are some songs from his first two EPs on, on this, but there's also a whole bunch of new songs. The album is a bit of a concept album in that he went on a holiday on, on a boat cruise and he did something very interesting. He eavesdropped on people's conversations, took notes, and from those little eavesdroppings, he began to create stories around what he heard and began to create the stories that would become the songs around what he heard. And so we'll check it out here. Here's a track, it's called Blame It On Me. We counted all our reasons, excuses that we made we found ourselves some treasure and threw it all away. Oh, what you waiting for? No, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? No, what you waiting for? Uh, that's Blame It On Me from the debut album from George Ezra. And when I wrote my initial first reaction review, I kind of said, you know, this is his debut album. And I felt like he is poised to be kind of a breakout star. He was a breakout star on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think this album, if it's properly marketed, uh, he could be this breakout artist because songs like this are just, I think, very infectious mm -hmm. and very happy. Yeah, very happy. Uh, yeah. There's just it's bright, it's positive, it's sunny, and it's it's the world needs some of that right yeah, now. And, and yeah, and the music and the way it's musically arranged, the, the musical arrangements work extremely well, especially on this song where it just, it's just everything's kind of in the right place, the way it builds up, mm -hmm. and um, nothing's overdone, nothing's understated mm -hmm. as far as the musical arrangements, and it just, it just has this, just this tremendous, I think, likability to it. Right, exactly. That, that, is, that can lead to just, just a lot of mass appeal, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. And mass appeal is not always bad. Sometimes we talk about it negatively. I, in this case, I say it's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, Packaging-wise, this comes in a standard jewel case here. And we've already seen the front. There's the back cover, just simply the track listings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a booklet inside. Now, um, uh, the booklet loses a few points with me. Lots of great pictures mm -hmm. in this in mm -hmm. this booklet. Mm -hmm. Lyrics are included, but boy, are they hard to read. I was straining just to read these lyrics. That's my only unfortunate thing. I wish the lyrics were easy to read. I want to read his lyrics. Uh -huh. I really do, uh, especially given the concept behind the lyrics. But unfortunately, I can't. Um, they're just, just, man, they're almost impossible to uh -huh. read. Uh, you know, but it's such a good album, though. Even still, you can't get past yeah. the fact that these are just really good songs. And track after track is just really, really good songs. Mm -hmm. um, so I heartily recommend this album to you. Um, the title, uh, Wanted on Voyage, comes from the, uh, the Paddington Bear series of books, mm -hmm. which has recently been a, been a movie. I've heard it's a very good movie. Um, but that is an expression from those books that fans of the books will know. I've never read them, so I don't know it, but I just heard him talk about that in an interview about it. So I just thought I'd mention that as well. Um, let's check out another track on this album. Now, what we've heard previously, I would say, is typical of this album. I think, you know, if you like that first song, you're going to hear more tracks kind of more or less in that same vein. You're going to hear some things that are a little bit different. Here is a track that is very untypical of the rest of the album. Uh, it's my personal favorite, one of my personal favorites on this album. It's called Spectacular Revival, and I'll tell you why I feel this way about the song once it's done. So here we go. I'm not that kind of man in the day. Won't you hold me steady? Spectacular rival. And I've had my medicine. Though you're not my friend, I love you till the end. 
You know, that, that has to be one of the most interesting things I've heard on a mainstream mm -hmm. release, uh, recent memory. And the thing that occurred to me is, is, and I know you'll have more things to say about it, but it almost sounded like as if um, a goth artist joined forces with Ennio Marconi, the the composer. Oh, okay. And, you know, you hear kind of some of those spaghetti western kind of uh -huh. sounds in there. Okay. But then also, it's a, it rem you know, I, I heard the the latest Church album not too long ago, and it, and I'm hearing some of that in there too, but it's v it's just very interesting. I yeah. mean, you know, and it makes me want to hear more, definitely. And like I said, this song is is not typical of uh -huh. the rest of the album. The first song is more typical of what uh -huh. the rest of the album is like. This song closes the album. It's a very dark ending for mm -hmm. the album, mm -hmm. for what is otherwise a very kind of upbeat album. Right. Uh -huh. Um. And I, I, it feels like another artist suddenly came into the recording studio and said, OK, I'm going to do the final track now. Let's do it. Um, some other totally different artist came in, uh -huh. the same guy. And I kind of felt like this, uh, when I reviewed this in my solo review, my first reaction review, I said, it feels like it's off the soundtrack of some obscure experimental 60s movie. Hmm. Is the way I describe it personally. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, it's, it's a solid album you know, all the way through from track to track. I don't think there's any bad tracks on here. You know, uh, I can't I give it a, give it a high rating, and um, it's also just nice to hear his you know his singing voice. He's a baritone. Mm -hmm. He's a baritone. We don't get a whole lot of baritones, um, you know, uh, singing on albums these days. No, you're it's mostly right. all tenors. Tenors, you're right. You know, and, and here he is, and he's a young guy too, mm -hmm. a very young guy, and you don't expect this deep voice, mm -hmm. you know, from 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 this from uh, such a young guy here. Um, but yeah, and I think it's great that we hear a baritone singing for yeah. a change. Yeah, yeah, you used to hear more of them, but you don't hear so many now. Not yeah. as much now. We've been Not, kind yeah. of in, we, we go through phases, uh -huh. you know, certainly during the 70s, it was more the more high-pitched mill singers. Yeah. And then suddenly in the 80s, we had a lot more of these baritone bass <laughs> singers uh -huh. coming uh -huh. up. So uh -huh. yeah, but it's good to hear that. Yeah, it is very good to hear that, yeah. So, so what have you got for us? No, actually, I brought in the, the most recent album from the Decemberists. Yes. And, and, um, and this is, a, and I, it's a tongue twister. What a terrible world. What a beautiful world. You have to yeah. say that slowly. I, you have to definitely say that slowly. At least I do. Yeah. You know. But, uh, you know, and I've enjoyed some of the Decemberist Pass albums. And, and again, it's another solid effort. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've only seen the band one time at Coachella. And, and that was one of the first years I went to the festival. And I didn't really actually like the band too much live. I mean, they were okay. But, boy, have I sure enjoyed their albums. You okay. know? And, and every time I hear one, I go, God, I need to get back and see the Decemberists live again. Mm -hmm. But I just love this band. They don't really sound like anybody else, and they, and they bring all different kinds of styles of music together, and, and yet it always sounds like you know, very cohesive, very artistic, and just love it. And let's kick things off with Calvary Captain, and let's listen to a little okay. bit of that. It's the second cool. song off the album. All right. Cavalry captain, I am the remedy to your heart. I am the common collective. I am printed upon your stars. And when you shine, and I should mention uh, that, of course, I've already heard this album. This is uh, one of the rarest occurrences where we both heard the same album. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen a whole lot. Um, and, of course, I'm familiar with the Decemberists. I first discovered them with their Hazards of Love album, which right. is still one of my all-time favorite albums. Oh, it's a fantastic album, yeah. To me, so far, nothing they've done has really topped that album. Mm -hmm. But that's like saying Pink Floyd has yet to top Dark Side of the Moon. Right. Doesn't exactly. mean they haven't made other good albums. Exactly. I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars, which is a good mm -hmm. rating. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good album. I think there's a lot of really good songs. Yeah, on I it. do too. Yeah, and that's that's how I see it too. You yeah. know, you put it on, the whole album definitely is one you want to listen to. But some of the songs really pop out at you and mm -hmm. grab you. And that's what I w why I wanted to bring it to the show today mm -hmm. because yeah, I. Th I can definitely recommend it very much on some of these strong songs on the album. Yeah. You know. And this is just a nice, I mean, I don't know if there's anything deeper to it looking at the lyrics. It just seems to be like a nice love song. Mm -hmm. It has a very, I think you mentioned it has a very 60s, Stax uh, so, Records. Yeah, Stax Records with the great horns, you know. Yeah, you mentioned a little bit of Burt Bacharach yeah. influence. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's it's kind of a sweet love song with some with some nice imagery in the lyrics. Yeah. But nothing... It's it's the lyrics are fairly simple, but just nice imagery in them. Yeah, you know, and and you know the, the thing is sometimes music is such a personal experience, but sometimes you put on an album and it and it just works for you. And, yeah, you know, and I think some of my favorite albums when I look back in time, 
um, have been like that. You mm -hmm. just, there's just certain records that just connect with you and you can play them. And that's how this one is. I mean, okay. I've, cool. I've been living with it for about a month and yeah. I still enjoy popping it in. I, I know earlier, you know, earlier this week I popped it in and it still just sounds great. It's just an album you want to listen to it, you know, yeah. especially it's, you know, great road music, you know, Excellent. definitely. Okay. Um, and, and the package is very nice, very colorful as we've I love the art. Yeah, oh yeah, we just as come to expect from the December, it's just great artwork. And here's a nice uh, picture of them inside here too, you can see, I'll hold that up by the camera so you can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, just a nice package, comes with a very nice uh, booklet too as well. Lyrics are very easy to read, which we like, right? Yeah. You can see the lyrics here. I took a look at it, yeah, it is, yeah. Just very nice, and just a very nice package. The next song that I'm going to feature shows you the, the range of which the band is capable, though I mm -hmm. think not only emotionally but kind of stylistically there's one song on here that kind of sounds um uh you know irish uh i think it's called better not wake the baby you know there's just there's some songs that are more folk mm -hmm. like this last one we listened to is more 60s sounding mm -hmm. you know um so but this next song i think is just very very much stirring emotionally maybe because of the chords or or whatnot but it's called make you better and i think this is a really good song and i thought we'd play a little of that one great let's check it out I want you thin fingers, I wanted you thin fingernails, and when you bend backwards, I wanted you, I needed you oh, oh, to make me better. And of course, now I've heard this album already, and I did a first reaction review to it. And what's interesting to me, since you brought it on the show, uh -huh. is hearing what your picks are, uh -huh. whereas I would have picked two totally different songs. Hmm. I would have uh, picked the singer addresses the audience and Philomena uh -huh. uh -huh. to show, as, as here are the tracks that I would present on the uh -huh. show. Uh, nothing wrong with your picks, yeah. they're good picks yeah. too, but it's just interesting to hear what you pick as versus what I would pick. Yeah. And, and how we, because it, it kind of tells me a little bit how we both process the songs, yeah. Yeah. and how we both choose because we want to put the best face forward. Yeah, right, exactly. And what your idea of the best face versus my idea. And I, I think your tracks are all good yeah, too, but yeah. just, just interesting. Yeah, I, I pretty much like every track on the album. Uh -huh. Like I said, I mean, obviously, I think with almost any record, you're going to have your favorites. Yeah. So, and these are two of mine. But, you know, one thing I will say about almost everything on this album is I just love the way the band is able, you know, they have these good songs, they're all kind of different from each other, but they're, they stand very well on their own, but it's how they construct them, how they, the builds, the dynamics, where the harmonies come in, mm -hmm. they just put a lot of craftsmanship into how these songs are constructed and, and, and sound on the album, and it's something that I don't know if people talk a lot about that kind of thing today. No, I don't think you know? they do. And, 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 and I think when I hear the Decemberists, it reminds me, you know, the pride that they put into these re record, not only the songs, but the recordings, what they do with the music and stuff, it just really blows me away. You know, and maybe that's why the music, why this album is registered with me too. And I will agree with you. There's a lot of thought into the construct, into how the arrangements are constructed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like that piano that comes in halfway through. Yeah. You know, because you, you you hear the basic melody and the rhythm, and then it comes through again, and then that piano suddenly comes in. Yeah. You know, and it's, there's just this thought to it. I'd once talked about a uh, a, Br a Bruno Mars album where I felt like it was cut and pasted. You know. Yeah. We recorded the verse. Second verse will just paste the same yeah. exact plane of the verse again. Well, Third done, verse will just paste it again. Yeah. No, no building in the arrangement. And TJ, I, I, I'm not going to pick on anybody here, but there was one record where um, my friends were in the studio. It was a very prominent Rock and Roll Hall of Fame artist, mm -hmm. and literally they didn't like the way one of the choruses was, so they copied one of the other choruses and put it in. So it wasn't even like it was imperative for the artist. Hey, it's we're going to sit in the room and we're going to, the the chor this chorus is going mm -hmm. to have this emotional feel to it mm -hmm. with the Decemberists and you know maybe I'm all wrong but I don't I don't hear any of that on here mm -hmm. I hear real real people creating real music mm -hmm. and the dynamics are natural and organic and mm -hmm. that's the way things are, need to be yeah. and that's something that I think one of the bad things about technology is that it's allowed people to do that mm -hmm. you know. And uh, in the old days, you could do things like that, but you had to sit there and cut and splice the tape and this and that. Yeah. But today, you can it was a meticulous, a meticulous process. process. Today, it's so easy, but it's it's reassuring to hear great musicians that yeah. care so much about their you know about their songs that they want to do them the right way. I, I agree with you. Sometimes, once in a blue moon, the cut and paste method works mm -hmm. when you want a certain consistency. 
Mm -hmm. from say verse to verse or measure mm -hmm. to measure where you want a certain thing to sound a certain way each mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it works, but most of the time it feels mechanical yeah. and yeah. artificial. And I think you, you just sense that and you mm -hmm. it doesn't quite grab you as much as it should. So exactly. I think I'm mostly in your camp on this yeah. Yeah. for the well, most part. Yeah. Good, yeah. And like I said, I re if, you, if you're a fan of the December Southern albums yeah, or I, haven't heard them, this is a good place to start. You know, I said that too. If, if you are a fan, of, well, I think if you're, I think personally, Go to the Hazards of Love if yeah. you've never heard them before because it's just such a great album. Yeah, it is a great album. Yeah. But that's just me. Um, but no, if you're a fan of the December, so you're not going to go wrong with this. You would definitely want to get this album. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. Just yeah. go get it. Yeah, and don't waste time. One of the best albums to come out so far this year, I yeah. think, too. Really yeah. good album. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing that in. Yeah, and thanks for bringing in George Ezra, too. My no, pleasure. Like in that. We hope that uh, you have hopefully discovered something new that you want to add to the soundtrack of your life. And so please, by all means, uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of these albums, if you've heard them. Give us your opinion. Oh, you're doing the 3D effect. There we go. Oh, isn't it scary the way the album just came Boy, out nothing, boys and girls? We have the highest production day here, don't we, at the yeah. show? <laughs> it's like Doc, Dr. Tongue's 3D House of Pancakes okay. type horror film type of thing. Um, but yeah, tell us what you thought of these albums, if you've heard them. And, and give us your suggestions for albums you think we might want to check out. We, we, you know, we're always open to suggestions. And so thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't, please click subscribe. Thank you to everybody that's shared us on Facebook and Twitter. We really, 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 really appreciate that. We yes. do. And keep doing it. And uh, we'll see you next time. You can check out my music at tjrmusic.com. Please uh, join my mailing list there. And you can check out my uh, writing at ocregister.com and at musicworthbind.com. And we'll see you next time. See you later, everybody. Bye. It's all about me! You know, me, me! I'm the star here! It's